So another technique that falls into this uh, amperometry and voltammetry class is called cyclic voltammetry, or we call it CV, cyclic voltammetry. Uh, the difference between amperometry and voltammetry is that in amperometry, you apply the constant potential. In amperometry, you apply the constant potential, but in voltammetry, you apply some potential waveform, which is not constant. For example, in cyclic voltammetry here, you can see that the potential is not constant, but you kind of ramp it up and lower it down. So specifically for cyclic voltammetry, you get something called triangular waveform here because this is similar to triangle, right? If you plot between the potential and time. And we call it cyclic because we scan back and we scan uh, forward and backward. For example, this is the forward scan. So maybe you start at zero volt and you scan to one volt, for example. So this is forward scan. And then you scan it back in the reverse scan. For example, you scan it back from one to zero again. And this forward and reverse can be in any direction. Like for uh, for the uh, the given example, you scan it to positive first, and then you ramp it back, or you can scan it to negative potential first, and then you increase it back to be positive. So it depends on what kind of species in the your in, in your solution. Like uh, if you have to reduce the species first, then you need to scan it to the negative potential and then you will oxidize it back to be a positive potential something like this uh, right and then you can notice that the slope or the scan rate we call it scan rate because the slope is the rate of the potential change against the time so the slope of this triangle we call it scan rate the slope of uh, the scan rate is uh, constant so this why you this is why you get the straight line between the potential and the time. So this is the waveform of the cyclic potentiometry. What you're gonna get from scanning this kind of potential waveform is called cyclic voltammogram. The technique is called cyclic voltammetry. So the output is called cyclic voltammogram. But sometimes we call it CV as well. So CV can can refer to both the technique itself or the Voltammogram. The CV, since now we vary between the potential, then we can plot the current against the potential. So from chrono the chrono amperometry or amperometry, we plot uh, I versus T, current versus time. But now in voltammetry, we plot the current against the potential. Specifically in cyclic voltammetry, since you scan the potential forward and then backward, now you can uh, overlay the potential and time to this, uh, cy this uh, cyclic voltammogram as well. So here, for example, if you scan positive first and negative later, this is going to be <coughs> uh, starting from this left-hand side of the voltammogram, and then you're going to go to the right-hand side, and then you go back to the left. What I mean, what do I mean by this? You're gonna see it later. So this is scan positive and then negative. Vice versa, if you scan uh, negative first and followed by positive, then uh, gonna be something like this instead, right? Yep. Uh, but now, uh, what do you have to? What you should be able to do is that you should be able to predict the shape of the voltammogram. But now the shape of the cyclic voltammogram depends on three things. First, the thermodynamics, because uh, the peak on the, post the position of the cyclic voltammogram kind of depends on the standard electrode potential or the form of potential of the electroactive species that you are measuring. This is the first uh, factor. The second factor is the kinetic and the reversibility. Uh, but I'm gonna de uh, define later what is the reversibility. The kinetic is basically uh, how fast of the reaction, which can affect the current, right? Because we already say that uh, the current is proportional to the electrode reaction rate. 
And the third factor is the mass transfer properties. Uh, we can use uh, mass transfer properties, the reversibility, the kinetics, and the thermodynamics to uh, predict the shape of the cyclic foot hemogram. But since uh, this class, uh, we have limited time. So we're going to focus on only two things, which is reversibility and the mass transfer properties of the electroactive species. So here we, we have the potential waveform, right? The cyclic photometry, which is triangular, what, which, is, which is what I want you to know. So the cyclic photometry uh, of general species, here I give you the condition. So this uh, electroactive species is reversible, is diffusion control, and the solution is answer. It means that you have the solution in the beaker of the electroactive species are here. And you put three electrodes thing and then you apply the triangular waveform to run the cyclic watermogram. Uh, this is reversible. What does it mean? It means that you can oxidize the R to become O and reduce O back to the R completely. This is called reversible process. It doesn't have any kinetic limitation. You will see the a reversible process in the example later, but now we can consider the reversible condition in which we can oxidize R to be O and reduce O to be back to R uh, completely. And this is the typical shape of the CV of the reversible diffusion control reaction. And this is the typical shape. And this is kind of similar to duct. So people kind of call this a duct shape with hammogram. So everyone in the field generally call this to be the duct shape like this is the mouse, maybe this is the head, something like this. So now we can explain why does it have this kind of shape. So again, the y-axis is current and the x-axis is the potential. And this is, let's say, this is kind of the form of potential or standard electrode potential of the species. I know. So we're going to start from this potential, the point A here. So the point A, we, we are at the applied potential. But the, this applied potential is much lower than the formal potential. We want to oxidize it, right? So the potential must be higher than the formal potential. But since this potential is much lower than the formal potential it means that you don't have any oxidation you cannot oxidize the species so that's why at this point the current is zero you don't get any faraday current so the current is zero now you're gonna start to increase the potential because it is a triangular waveform right so you increase the potential so let's uh, do point b so point b you apply the potential close to the form of potential. It's not higher than the form of potential yet, but it's close to it. But uh, from the nurse equation, you can have kind of calculate that even if it's lower than the form of potential, if it's close enough, then you start to oxidize some of the species. And oxidation, if, if you can uh, have the oxidation, it means that you get the, the, the anodic current, right? So I write it here, some oxidation occurs and you get some anodic current at point B here. And notice that your oxidation is not complete. So this is the simulation, right? Starting, you don't, uh, your species is the same, but now you oxidize some of it, it's not complete. So at the electrode surface, it's, the concentration is not uh, completely zero. You, you still have some uh, species here at this uh, potential, all right? This is point B. At point C, you, you uh, increase more potential at point C, and this is where you get the highest amount of the current. This is because you, uh, your first, your potential is higher than the former potential, so your oxidation is much, uh, complete and then you have the maximum oxidation oxidation rate because you have the maximum diffusion rate now you can now you oxidize uh, the surface completely you oxidize the r at the surface completely so this is why 
uh, this is why uh, illustrate no R anymore here. And your diffusion rate is highest, right? Because your concentration profile is uh, has the highest uh, slope. So because your oxidation rate is maximum, you get the peak here. We call this peak anodic peak. Some people call it oxidative or, or oxidation peak, but uh, from, your, from the IUPAC term, we call it anodic peak. Same as anodic current, this is anodic peak at point C. All right. So now what is interesting is that you apply more potential or more positive potential. From the theory, if you use the Nunn's equation, you're going to see that, you, yeah, we should get more oxidation because uh, now you get more uh, all species regarding to R. But it turns out that here, your Faradaic current decrease. Even you apply more potential, your Faradaic current decrease. This is where something called depletion effect occurs. This is the terminology. This is called depletion effect. What, why, why does it happen? This is because although higher potential will oxidize the surface more completely, but from point C, you can see here that you already uh, deplete all the uh, at the surface here. So to, fur to further get the oxidation, your species further from the electrode needs to be diffused to, to the electrode surface first. And this diffusion is slow. This is why we call it depletion effect. We get a slower diffusion, and this is why you get less anodic current. Uh, this effect is similar to what you saw in uh, chronoamperometry, right? When you get the fall of the current, this is uh, actually the same. But this is, uh, you apply more potential, but you don't get more current anymore. Instead, you get less current because uh, the diffusion is slower from the peak. At this peak, you get maximum oxidation, oxidation rate. But at this peak, you get a slower diffusion. That may be some uh, exam question around here, like ask you why you get less current, although uh, we apply higher potential, something like that. So this is a point D. And then further, uh, further uh, increase the potential, gonna even decrease the thing because you need further uh, from the electrode surface to be oxidized at the electrode surface. Uh -huh. So now we're gonna scan it back, right? Because this is triangular waveform. Uh, there's no R left, but why can the oxidation continue to proceed? Uh, there is some diffusion. There is some diffusion occurs, but it occurs at the very uh, small rate, very small rate uh, compared to the point C. So this is why uh, you still get some oxidation, but it is uh, slow. All right. Yeah. So scan it back. So let's scan it back at point E then. So now I change the I change the color from blue to orange. Uh -huh. Orange indicate E O. So now we can imagine what what uh, what kind of potential we have to apply if we want to reduce O back to the R. The answer is the potential should be lower than the former potential, right? But now at point E, the potential is still higher than former potential, so you can still get the oxidation. You still get the oxidation, but at some point here, at the current is equal to zero here, it means that you don't get any oxidation anymore. So applying the potential lower than this point will reduce O back to the R. For example, point F. So at point F, uh, at point E now you have uh, some O at the electrode surface, right? But now you apply some potential here at point F. You can see the color intensity change, but not doesn't change that much from point E to point F. So it turns out that at point F, point F is actually similar to point B. Uh, point B, the former potential is lower than, oh no, the applied potential is lower than the former potential, right? So we can oxidize some of the R, but not complete. Same thing here. Uh, at point F, the applied potential is 
still a little bit higher than formal potential, but now you're gonna start to reduce the species back from O to R. So this is why your current here is lower than zero. Here we, uh, this, we define the cathodic current or the current from the reduction to be negative, right? So this is why uh, you get uh, negative current at point F. And if you further re uh, decrease the potential, decreasing the potential now at point G, this is gonna be the maximum reduction rate, right? Because uh, lower potential will reduce more of the O to become R. And further reduction means that you get a, a higher reduction rate and higher reduction rate result in the higher uh, cathodic current. But at this point, point G, uh, this is the where you get the maximum rate of the reduction of the O to R. Similar to point C, I believe, yeah, you get the maximum rate, uh, maximum oxidation rate at point C. But at point G, this is a maximum reduction rate. We call this peak a uh, cathodic peak, yeah, same as cathodic current. We call this peak cathodic peak. And at point, and we can we gonna keep uh, decreasing the potential. And this is same thing happens. Although you can oh sorry, although you can uh, reduce more of it, but there is no R here any, and there is no O here anymore. So you have to diffuse O further from the electrode surface. So now your reduction rate start to be decreasing. So depletion effect happening here. Same thing here, right? Same as the here where we even we apply more positive potential, but your reduction rate uh, decrease, uh, your oxidation rate decrease because uh, of the depletion effect, you get slower diffusion. Same thing happens here. You get slower uh, reduction rate because uh, you don't have R, you don't have O at the electrode surface. So you have to diffuse O further from the electrode surface. And then at the end, we're back to the initial potential edge when you, we don't get anything. So basically no current. So this is uh, like all the points on the cyclic wood hemogram. So this uh, explain the peak dark shape of the cyclic wood hemogram, but this is uh, for the reversible diffusion control reaction in the answer solution.